What is going on guys, Jack here, and welcome to a quick little video for you guys today. Rather than a Road to Glory episode, someone requested that I kind of talk in depth a little bit about the tactic that I've been using on this save. Uh, obviously, this is the tactic that's won me the league. It's a tactic that prior to kind of, I guess, applying it myself, I'd never tried this shape before. So, um, yeah, they, let's get straight into this and just talk about what's what. Uh, just a quick thing first, uh, on your tactics screen, and this can be a pretty useful thing to do, is um, you can have it so you can have stuff like the ability, uh, you can also include stuff like um, player's best position. The way you do this is you just right click, insert column, then coaching, uh, or I'm trying to think where they are now. Uh, yeah, coaching here, and then you can have stuff like player's best position, and it'll tell you where, the, where your coach thinks their best position is. Uh, and you can also do this uh, for to include stuff like insert column, coaching, uh, potential ability, uh, just their overall recommendation, their personality, as well as the duty and role. So for anyone wondering how to get the duty and role in, that's how you do it. And then um, you can also just kind of sort out these uh, thing, these um, what's called, like headings by dragging them. So a little tip for you there, if that's something that you were wondering about that I use in my videos a lot. Very useful, um, something that I recommend you really get in the habit of using. But without further ado, let's get straight into today's tactic, uh, which is, I guess it's a 5-3-2, I want to say. And it's a funny one. Um, okay, so the starts of this tactic. Um, for you guys who have watched tactics videos of mine in the past, I did a lot back when I really first started my channel. Uh, and when the Pentagon, uh, Pentagon Challenge was in full flow and I was removing clubs, I did talk about my different tactics. But I never really talked about it with the Road to Glory. Uh, just a quick thing, the Pentagon Challenge will be starting back up in a few weeks' time, so keep an eye out for that as well. Um, so yeah, uh, the tactic with this one, and the tactic with any tactic really I find, is to... Find a shape that your team is suited to. There is no point in playing a 4-3-3 if you have two first-choice strikers and five uh, midfielders all good enough to play in the first team. It's a mistake that a lot of people make on Football Manager. Play a shape that suits you. That's kind of how this tactic was evolved and born. It actually started life out uh, with Luis Enrique playing an anchorman and Peyrod or whoever else playing centre mid however with Peyrard playing centre mid uh, well not playing centre mid because he can't play there it meant that I had to drop Jao Jose or Alfredo Senior who are two very talented strikers so in the end I ended up switching things up the other problem I had without having um I guess a guy in the centre attacking mid role was that I had no one playing in the pocket and it meant that there was no real, I guess, attacking threat going forward and it left me getting a lot of draws because although I'd defend well, I wouldn't create enough. Uh, the reason for me playing the anchor man initially was that... Um, I wanted to use these wing backs going up. The idea with these wing backs is that they provide all the width on the team. Uh, there are specific attributes you need in these wing backs, which I'll come on to shortly. But what it means is with these guys going up, I felt like I might need a little bit of additional cover to cover the free centre back. So I did play with this anchor man, and it, it was a bit of a loose part, really. Although it did limit opposition chances significantly to maybe one or two shots a game, it meant I had nothing going forward. So in sacrificing the anchor man uh, with this tactic, it gave me some defensive frailty uh, which the three centre backs to be honest coped with amazingly uh, but it also allowed me to play Peyrard and have kind of someone in the pocket someone lurking in the space between the opposition back four and kind of uh, their midfield and really kind of break them down so that was that uh, so this is the shape uh, it's something that someone said you know oh this is kind of unusual so uh, the main idea behind it is that we defend as a unit and what I mean is by that uh, Luke Shaw and Nazarov will get behind the ball when they need to Luis Enrique kind of will drop a little bit deeper uh, playing ball winning midfielder uh, Pereira, who's a box to box, he'll drop back when we don't have the ball, and we really defend with a really solid core unit of um, of seven players, as well as Payrod, who kind of drops to kind of an area whereby he's cutting out any of the balls that the midfield might try to play back towards the defence, and also trying to break down the partnerships of um, kind of opposition centre mids when the rest of the players are dropping back to get on the ball. Uh, so, uh, looking at this, standard goalkeeper. For the back three, I've gone with three defensive uh, defenders. I did a video a long time ago, and I think you can find it in the Football Manager Tips and Tricks playlist, about playing with three centre-backs and how you can have different approaches. Uh, with these three guys, they're all set to defend. I know some people, and it, it, I guess you could play it yourself, is um, you could change your centre mid to stopper, and then your two wider kind of centre-backs to cover. What this would mean is... Hang uh, Tangai Horn pushes up a little and tries to cut the ball out of the air. 
really limiting any opposition ch- chances and cutting out the direct ball. Uh, however, I decided against this simply because we've got a fairly crowded midfield anyway with uh, five players who can potentially stop any long balls coming in and cut them out themselves. Uh, and so, you know, well, there's not enough space really for them to hoof it up. And when they do, Luis Enrique should be able to cut it out a little and... We have four very t- uh, well, three very talented centre backs anyway, who are all good in the air. So it seemed like a bit of a loose part. And uh, then obviously with the coverers, they drop back slightly deeper, and people get confused between a stopper and a coverer. Uh, just in brief, covering defenders will look to read the ball and kind of sweep the ball from behind rather than going to meet it in the air and you know chase attackers. Whereas the stopper is the kind of player that when a ball's coming over and the attacker's running onto it, he's going to go up there and meet the ball in the air and try and cut out the pass rather than kind of sit back and anticipate. Uh, the ball coming over the top. So I go with these three guys at centre back. There's nothing really too special about these guys. One thing I would say is that all my centre backs are very fast and very physically strong. You can see Gorfier here. Uh, you can see Horn, Tangai Horn. These guys are all very fast and physical defenders. And what this means is that I can afford to play the offside trap. Uh, even with three at the back uh, because I know that they can chase back and they're going to outpace a lot of players in our league um, it's something that people often underrate is if you play the offside trap and it goes wrong and you've got quite sluggish defenders um, it's going to bite you back and you're going to suffer because of it the other thing worth noticing is that um, where is it um Defensive line is set to push up. Um, Here it is. Sorry, I'm going blind. Uh, What this means is that my defence will push up and there's a lot of gaps behind us. Uh, Especially when we're in attack, we push a lot of our men forward and we're only really left with the three at the back as real defensive players. And so, if I had three very slow centre-backs and they were to ping the ball over the top, because I'm not playing a stopper, it means that I'm really relying on these three defenders to, to at least try... And hopefully outpace uh, the opposition back, uh, you know, attacking threats, I suppose, and chase back. So that's the reason behind that. Another thing worth noticing, noting is the fact that my backup player, Matty, is another very fast centre-back. I like my centre-backs to have pace. A common theme across all my centre-backs is that they lack the mental stats. However, a lot of these players are fairly young and I'm hoping they can develop them in the coming years. So moving on to the wing-backs. Uh, wing-backs, these guys cover the most ground on the pitch. Uh, last season, Nazarov and Luke Shaw were the players who covered the most distance in the league last year. And that's because we're playing a rigid attacking uh, formation. And so these guys, although they start in a fairly defensive position, by the end of any kind of phase of attack, these guys really will be in kind of winger positions at the very least, sometimes cutting inside and really creating opportunities. Uh, so whilst both these guys are fairly uh, kind of defensive orientated, uh, it is worth noting the fact that you know these guys are very kind of fast and high stamina players. Luke Shaw here, 15 acceleration, 15 pace, 16 stamina, 16 agility. You know these guys are the guys who are going to be doing all the running for the team. Nazarov especially, incredibly fast player with his 19 acceleration, 18 pace, 16 natural fitness, 16 stamina. Honestly, these guys cover so much ground. You know they're covering easily 10 kilometers a game i think i've seen nazarov hit 16 kilometers running a game which is a pretty crazy amount it has to be said so the main idea with these guys is that they bomb it down the wing both these guys going forward have fairly decent crossing as well i mean luke shaw with 18 crossing and 14 dribbling and uh, nazarov with 13 in each which isn't too bad uh one thing i like to do is if you're looking for wing backs who you really want to attack well i like to actually set the midfield role to um, winger and then support and then see how well they're suited to this role uh so as you can see nazarov suited fairly well as well as the wing back position um It's kind of an odd uh, kind of habit that I've got into doing, but there are a few stats that vary between the two positions, and it can be useful just to check up on them. In the centre of the mid, uh, we go with Luis Enrique and Pereira. I like to think of these two guys as kind of, um, I don't know really, we've got a bit of a Xavi Alonso in Luis Enrique, and I'll come on to that in a second. And then in Pereira, you've really got a workhorse, box-to-box player, the kind of player who's going to get back and get a tackle in and then work right the way up. Pereira is just a really well-rounded off centre mid, which suits him really well to the box-to-box role. Uh, Not only that, he has insane stamina, and he also has really good decisions and determination. So he is going to get up and down the pitch, really determined nature, and his pace isn't too bad either. So that's the reason for him playing there. Uh, It's a role that he's suited to really well. Uh, Pretty standard box-to-box there. Uh, This is where it gets slightly different with Luis Enrique. This guy, fantastic little pacey player. Um, Pacey and an anchorman. You know, he he can play anchorman if he wants. You'll see here that his stats really aren't kind of settled for ball-winning midfielder. Um, 
if I just show you this quickly, uh, ball winning midfielder defend. This is what he's set to, and what you'll notice is he doesn't have the bravery or anticipation or the teamwork really um, to be a super effective ball winning midfielder. Um, and he has a very good kind of other stats. It has to be said, you know, pace, acceleration, and then his technicals particularly are very good. And I wanted to make the most of this, and particularly 18 passing. That's a really useful stat to have in a kind of player who you want to play in a defensive position. So what I did with Luis Enrique is, um, if I just go to player instructions here, uh, and then select Luis Enrique, um, his mentality is set less defensive than a regular defensive ball-winning midfielder, and his creative freedom's turned up. I really wanted to make the most of this guy's ability to pass the ball. He's much a Xavi Alonso player, as I mentioned, and the idea really with that is a lot of ball-winning midfielders and kind of deep line playmakers and players who sit deep and play the ball around well, they get muddled up. I mean, you do get, you know, players who can only play one or the other. I'm trying to think of an example. An example of a ball-winning midfielder, for example, would be Mascherano. He gets the ball in real life, he looks up and then passes it to the more creative Barcelona players. The thing with Luis Enrique is he's a bit like Xavi Alonso. He isn't I guess the most switched on defensively you know he likes to go forward but because he has decent tackling decent marking and he's a fairly physical presence in the center he's able to win the ball and then with his decent passing and decent creativity spread it up to the field and really act as a fairly creative player in the center so that's the reason for playing um, Enrique how I do there uh, you know there are other players who I'm trying to develop this role for Rico Francis I really want to maybe one day become this player he kind of lacks the um creative uh, stats at the moment his flair really lets him down a little but he's already got the really decent physical stats and the natural talent in the um, tackling area and so I feel like he's going to be really well suited to that position going forward um, so that's that uh, moving on to centre attacking mid here we have Peyrard the man the myth the legend if you guys have not been watching this save you won't know who this guy is this guy is the best regen I've ever seen Honestly, he's insane. Um, a lot of people complain regens are overpowered in this game. And whilst they are, um, this is a f weird example. It's a bit of a freak. Um, for those of you who don't know, when regens are formed in real... When the real life players, like the hot shots, the wonder kids are developed, uh, they come up with a potential ability that's usually like a minus number. Now, I could talk about potential abilities for a while, but essentially, a very, very good player like Carlos Fierro has a minus eight potential ability, which means he has a, uh, a potential ability between 160 and 180, depending on saves. And I mean, a minus nine, which is minus 80 to 200, is near enough unheard of in regular players. However, with regens, for what Whatever reason they're far more prominent and whilst you can have a player who might have say 198 200 potential ability the chances are they'll very 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 rarely reach it you know you'll occasionally see one or two regens in your saves and you go holy cow that guy's pretty beasty payrod is this guy um on my save it has to be said i got him in when he was 16 he was the best 16 year old i've ever seen uh, really crazy player. He's played now for three years in the first 11. First team football in the Premier League, playing in Europe, playing regular games. He's won the World Cup with France at the age of 18. And it's weird with this guy because the stars have kind of aligned. Because whilst you could have a player with 180 potential ability, say, they might have mentals that let them down. They're hidden attributes. They might have uh, low consistency, low adaptation, um you know, there's so many features and factors in FM that you can't decide that are going to limit a player's growth. And it kind of feels like with Payrod, all the stars have aligned and he just he's not getting injured. He's continuing to play. He's played 100 games in three years, uh, which is just crazy to see. But anyway, looking at this guy, he's a very kind of talented player in all areas. And I really wanted to make the most of him as he really is kind of the best player in the squad. Uh, so I've been playing him as an advanced playmaker. Uh, with this guy, absolutely crazy stuff has happened. He's been really the leading man. He scores a lot of goals from uh, advanced playmaker. Nothing really too special about him. The only difference being I have him to roam from position. The reason for this being is that I really want him to kind of float in this pocket. I want him to look for the space. Against teams who don't have an anchor man, I know they're playing with two centre-backs it's near suicide if they don't man mark Payrod because he will find this space and he can draw defenders in and then unload it onto the two players who play ahead of him who are Jao Jose and Alfredo Senior uh, these two players there's nothing too significant about Alfredo Senior and Jao Jose uh, one thing worth noting is that with Alfredo Senior um, He is set to the lazy poacher role. Now, I've talked a little bit about this before, but basically a lazy poacher, a regular poacher, um, 
these are his normal things. He'll close down and he's fairly attacking. My lazy poacher, which is kind of a role that I've learned myself, I turn the closing down all the way off and the mentality all the way up. What this means is he isn't going to waste his energy closing down players. He doesn't need to do that. This is the guy who has pace and is going to spring the trap and find some space, especially when Payrod draws in the opposition defence. And what I want him doing is I really want him sitting on the the line. I don't want him kind of tracking back and closing down players in the whole pitch. I want him to be fairly lazy, you know, stand on the back four. If the ball comes to the defender stood 10 yards away from him, he's going to chase them down, but at the same time, he's not going to kind of waste his energy uh, doing other things. His sole purpose is to find space and end the attack and offer a ball up the field for the likes of Luis Enrique and Payrod to find. And then the other option is the advanced forward. Fairly standard option again. Jao Jose plays this role very nicely for us. Uh, he has really good finishing stats, Jao Jose. I mean, you can see this here. He's very much a Brazilian forward. Uh, he's fairly strong in the air as well, Jao Jose, which helps a lot. Um, you know, he's tall, he has strength, and he's an incredibly talented player. And I guess advanced forward doesn't quite make the most of him, but at the same time it plays to his strengths in terms of his physical ability, which is in that Alfredo Senior, whilst he has some of it, he isn't kind of the best header and the best jumper in the game. And these players work really well because Jao Jose offers a ball up the top. He's going to be the guy stood on the back four, really fighting with the centre-backs, whereas Alfredo Senior is really just looking to find some space and look for that pass on the ground. Um Overall, this tactic, playing rigid and attacking, uh, what this means is that when we're in possession of the ball, uh, uh, sorry, when we're not in possession of the ball, we kind of line up like this. The wing backs could even be argued to drop slightly deeper to make a five at the back, and Luis Enrique drops a little bit as well. So we really have six players sitting back, parking the bus, defending well. And then when we go on the attack, uh, Luis Enrique continues just to sit as kind of a player, just sweeping up anything in the centre. However, he will contribute to the attacking phases. And then Luke Shaw and Nazarov really push right up the field and offer options and so we end up really with six or seven players in our attacks at a time which works really well for us looking at the team instructions there's nothing too special about this as we said the only real one is the width which i have set to 10 uh, the reason for this being is that the wing backs whilst they can be hit on the wings and i do hit them on the wings by having them play not so wide it offers them a chance to cut inside and helps us play slightly narrower uh, as payrod and alfredo senior aren't the strongest players in the air and whilst jao jose is there and the cross can be hit to him sometimes it's nice just to play a little bit narrower compact and really kind of i guess wear down an opposition by just holding the ball outside their area and pass it passing it around waiting for an opportunity and this is also reflected through the through the middle passing a lot of the time what happens is we'll win the ball ball will be passed to Enrique or Pereira and this gives a real chance for the wing backs to get up and they won't actually really receive the ball until they're in the final third of the opposition half by which point they've often found the space or drawn in the full backs and created some space for Peirard to work it's his magic or just the two strikers to find an opening. So that's the tactics. You'll see Alfredo Senior is set as the target man. Um, this is just because, as I said, you know you want to get to feet. He's the lazy poacher, and this has worked well for me. It has to be said across the uh, kind of seasons. But yeah, that's the tactic. I've gone on a bit of a rant about this. Not, not a rant, a ramble. But hopefully you guys have found it kind of interesting. Uh, I like to do with these videos, you know, try and have something to talk about. I know people love tactics videos. I really hope there's a way that in the future I can find a series whereby I can really incorporate them regularly into the series. Um, I'm not going to put a download to my tactic in the description, which um, I'm sorry for those of you who want one. The reason for this being is, and you can replicate it by all means if you want to, but the reason that I'm not going to share it is because... I I feel like in my videos I want to kind of promote people learning how to make their own tactics, how to develop systems that work for them and be successful because for me that's how I got good at the game, that's how I improved at Football Manager. I look at other people's ideas and tactics and reading various Football Manager blogs and then applying them in my own tactic systems to get stuff that worked for me and there is no more rewarding feeling than using a tactic you've developed to go on and win the Premier League with a squad you've taken from the seventh tier of English football. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers any questions. If you have any more about the tactic, leave them down below. As always, guys, I will get back to you. Uh, Road to Glory episode will be up tomorrow for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you could give a like, it helps me out. It also lets me know that you guys are enjoying this tactics video. And it also gives me an indication as to whether or not I should maybe do some more in the future. Because obviously, more likes means that I know more people are enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, that, that is that, guys. Thank you for watching so much. It is me, Jack. Hopefully you enjoyed something a little bit different today. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.